Oddly enough, this is one of those videos where I'm going to show you proof of something being beneficial to your performance, be it running, biking, whatever, and yet there's going to be a group of people that simply don't experience that benefit. Actually, they're worse off. So regardless of what group you're in, those that will see a benefit or those that experience a worse performance, I'll cover both sides of the story in this series. The drug, the chemical, the molecule that we're talking about is caffeine. So in this video, I'd like to briefly show you some data across three studies testing the effect of caffeine on endurance performance. Within this first video of several in the series, I'll show you if there is a benefit to your endurance performance. I'll show you how much of a benefit, assuming there is one, as well as the amount to consume to achieve that benefit, assuming there is one. Let's be real, between you and me, I'll go ahead and tell you that there is a benefit for most people, but I like to see the science, not just blindly believe. So let's hop in. As promised, there are three studies that we can use to see the benefits of caffeine on endurance performance. Briefly, all of the studies recruited people with either little or no endurance training experience or were seasoned veterans. So the studies investigated runners, but also cyclists, and I would feel comfortable arguing that this would extend to most endurance activities. So don't feel left out. The researchers had at least two conditions they split the participants into. One was a placebo wherein they consumed no caffeine, but consumed only a sugar pill. The other conditions was a caffeine condition wherein they consumed a caffeine pill. Some of the studies also used varying concentrations of caffeine, but we'll get to that as promised. Ultimately, they end up comparing the performance of these individuals when they are consuming caffeine versus when they're consuming the placebo. So that's a rudimentary breakdown of all three studies, but as always on Physionic, I like to nerd out on the details. So if you're also so inclined and want more details, then check out the deep dive videos on these studies that I'll link for you. Okay, so looking at the first study data, they use two different caffeine doses, a low dose and a high dose. The graph here shows the overall improvement or the seconds shaved off of the non-caffeinated time. In this instance, their running time to finish an eight kilometer race was improved by 164 seconds or two minutes and 44 seconds when they consumed the lower dose of caffeine. Now the higher dose also improved their running time, but only by 110 seconds or one minute 50 seconds. You might be wondering why they experience a worse time with more of this wonder molecule circulating through their veins. Well, we'll get to that, don't worry. I'd like to get through the other studies first, if you'll allow me. The other running study showed similar results between more inexperienced runners as well as competitive runners. There was also a similar effect between the groups, so it's not like one group of runners did better in their relative performance improvement, meaning your experience level makes no difference. That said, the biking study also showed an improvement, but what's unique about this study and offers us some clues into some upcoming issues is the fact that they also displayed the individual improvements across all eight participants. So if you were to look at the average of all eight participants, you see that there's an improvement of about 20 seconds or so. However, you can also see that participant three experienced a benefit that is a far cry from participant two. Participant two experienced over a one minute improvement, which is massive. So what does this added bit of data tell us? Well, it tells us that people vary significantly in their body reaction to caffeine. Most people improve some, some people improve a lot, and oddly, although it typically improves performance, for a few people, it may worsen their performance. I'll touch on that in a minute. I'd like to discuss dosing first, as well as the amount of performance improvement first. So the lowest caffeine dose given was three milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So if you take your weight in kilograms and multiply by three, you'll experience a performance benefit by consuming that amount of caffeine. So if you're an 80 kilogram person, you'd consume 240 milligrams total, for example. So the higher amount consumed was six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. But as we saw, there was no added benefit. So there is an upper threshold. 
Now, in terms of a performance boost, I know I threw out the minutes and seconds, but that doesn't translate well to specific instances that you might be interested in. So relative numbers are between one and 4% improvement. But in future videos, I'll point out added performance improvements for certain individuals. It might not seem like a lot, but for any experienced athlete, you know that is a world of difference. Okay, now to the final elephant in the room. The first thing I mentioned was that some people do not experience a benefit. Beyond that, some people suffer a performance loss when they consume caffeine. So why is that? Well, for now, I'll say that it has something to do with your liver. That's right, your liver. So if you're interested in knowing exactly what is going on leading to this odd result, let's discuss in the next video of the series. Speak to you then.